up for Abby Wishuda, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. How you guys doing? <laughs> Performs all over the city, you guys. That's the thing they say a lot of the time when they bring you up. You may have seen this comic performing all over the city. Uh, mostly people who recognize me uh, recognize me from earlier that same evening when I was seating you or standing outside this place asking you to come inside to see the free comedy show. <laughs> Those are the performances that most resonate with my audience, I find. <laughs> this is weird. And Neil, who was just up, uh, we don't usually perform together. We try not to uh, because, as you can tell from looking at us, we have a very similar set that we do. A lot of our jokes are almost verbatim, and so I, uh, I try not to perform with him. It's different when I say them, though. It'll come out a little differently. Uh, for instance, walking in Brooklyn, guy popped out to mug me. I said, uh, get the next guy. And then he robbed me. <laughs> a little different. I, uh, what can I tell you guys? I'm... Uh, don't panic. I realize I look a little bit less like a comic and a little more like a washed up former sorority sister <laughs> who just keeps coming to the meetings, right? <laughs> Ooh. Everybody knows that girl. Like, maybe I graduated in 2004, but I'm just like really excited to see what Tri Delta is going to do for fundraising this year. <gasps> I hope it's cookies, you guys. I fucking seriously hope it's cookies. Me too. I can see the fear in the eyes of certain men in the audience when I get on stage. They're like, oh, fuck. She's not just gonna fucking talk about her period the whole time, is she? <laughs> not the full 10 minutes. Buckle in. <laughs> what can I tell you guys? I'm going through a divorce. I'm getting out of a 15-year marriage. How about that? Thank you. Oh, yeah, whoa. I like saying that on stage in New York because it's like the only thing that gets like a rise out of people. Because right? New Yorkers are so fucking jaded. I could sooner tell you I was coming off a 15-year coke bender. And you'd be like, ah, okay, probably. <laughs> that fake blonde hair? Figures. But a 15-year marriage always raises suspicions. I think I look a little bit younger than I am, too. Especially, like, dudes in bars are always like, oh, would you get married when you were, like, 11? I'm like, 12. Actually, I don't like to talk about it. It was a dark time. <laughs> That's cool. If you ask my ex, he would tell you that the reason we ended it is because I have an ego problem. <laughs> That's not what my fans are telling me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that one tweet about it, I fucking think I would have heard. <laughs> no, to be fair, after all that time together, I realized we just like fundamentally disagreed about important stuff. Like it turns out he wanted five or maybe even like six children. Uh, and I wanted maybe one orgasm. <laughs> Ever, you know, and we couldn't come to an agreement about it, so I had to get out of there. I find that's a joke that the ladies mostly appreciate. <laughs> and then every dude who's here with a lady kind of leans over, like, I'm giving you orgasms, though, right? <laughs> no, yeah, bro, you definitely are. <laughs> you definitely are. They're super easy to give. You're like an orgasm fairy. <laughs> The bar didn't like that joke either. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> what else can I tell you guys? Yeah, uh, you tell people you get divorced and they want to know what happened, they want to know why. Uh, those people are single, <laughs> okay? Uh, married people don't ask you that question. Anyone married here? Married people? No, because they're all home having a terrible night. I'll tell you why. Uh, Married people don't ask you that question because married people know why I got divorced, you guys. Uh, because I was married, okay? It's fucking hard. Married people get it. They know. They see the look in my eye. They're like, yeah, mm -hmm, we've been there. I thought about it, too. They know. Getting divorced is weird now. Like, there's stuff you have to think about that, like, our parents didn't have to think about when they got divorced. Like, when you're breaking up the assets, you have to do the house, the car, the mortgage, the whole thing. But now there's other stuff that's harder to break up. Like, who gets to keep the shared Netflix account? That's serious. Has someone in here been together a really long time? Shout it out. Is anybody awake? What? A year? Two years? Oh, God. Okay, two years. Think about how many, think about how much shared Netflix viewing time that is, right? You've gotten that algorithm just right. Netflix understands that this is something that you might like to watch, right? And that's a real victory. When Netflix makes a recommendation and you watch it and you like it and you're like, thank you, Netflix. You fucking get me. You get me, right? That's a win. I have a new account now. This thing doesn't fucking know me. <laughs> it doesn't know me. 
I had one bad night, okay? I made one bad decision. Now I won't stop recommending that I watch reruns of the Gilmore Girls. <laughs> Shut your mouth, Netflix. You know how many hours of foreign language documentaries I had to sit through to get my user history up to the point where I was proud to display it on a big screen TV at the Origins of the New Black season premiere viewing party? <laughs> a lot. The answer is a lot. We can't do that with my, no my new account. New. No. Uh, hey, Abby, can we use your account to watch the House of Cards finale? Mm, no, you may not. Okay, why? Uh, because I can't be in a situation where a room full of people whom I respect find out that based on my viewing history, Netflix thinks I might also enjoy a dolphin's tail. <laughs> Not prepared to handle that kind of judgment. And it's like, okay, I could keep the old account, but that's got its own pitfalls, right? It's like, every time I log in, Netflix has got to remind me that I'm alone now. It's like, oh, who's watching? Is it Abby or Joe? Hmm, thanks, Netflix. Joe's not here right now. Thanks for fucking bringing it up. And then I'm crazy because I'm a woman, right? So then I get to that point where I want to toggle to his account, check out his viewer history, see what kind of information I can glean from it, right? Ladies, right? We're nuts. You would all do it. Turns out he's been watching a lot of Pride and Prejudice. So obviously getting laid. <laughs> and it's the Kira Knightley version, so that whore's got good taste. And then I'm like, what if he's doing the same thing with my account? So then I get back on my old account and I'm like watching Die Hard 3 and WrestleMania documentaries and shit. <laughs> yeah, we're all fucking. How about that? <laughs> it's cool. I'm dating in the city, so I'm getting a lot of dick pics. That's how dudes introduce themselves in Manhattan. Are you guys doing this? Are you sending your dick to people? Don't send your dick to people. I don't have a joke for this. It's just the PSA portion of the of the show. Uh, there was a guy from London here at the last show and he said uh, they also send dick pics there but they, uh, they don't call them dick pics, they call them penis photographs. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of nice, right? That sounds like something you might like go to like a fancy gallery and buy a penis photograph for your salon, right? That's kind of nice. You're not going to post any of the dick pics in your living room. Uh, the thing is, is like, if you're in a gay relationship, then send your dick all over the place, right? Because men are very visual. That's going to get a good response. But ladies, we're just not visual people. That's the reality. Like, even if I love you, and I love what your dick is doing for me in real life, I don't want a fucking photograph of it. <laughs> right? Ladies, back me up. Is there ever going to be a moment that you can imagine going back to your phone to, like, look for your favorite one? <laughs> Sweetie, thank you. I love this one. I look at it every time I miss you. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> I do two stupid things when I get the dick pic now, which I recommend people do uh, just for fun. The first is silly for me. I just, I changed the contact photo in my phone to a picture of the dick. I know, that's dumb. It's a fun way for me to remember that you are a dick and that I'm never calling you again. <laughs> uh, and it has the added bonus that I now have this like yearbook of dicks in my contacts list. It's like, I wonder which one of these guys is going to be voted most likely to succeed this year. None of you, because you sent me a dick pic. The other fun thing I do, so if someone sends me a dick pic, I send him back a picture of another bigger dick. <laughs> <laughs> another one for the ladies. <laughs> uh, I have a doozy in my phone. If you want to see me after the show, I will share it with you. It's like a burrito. I mean, it's nuts. Um... <laughs> Most guys get that this is my way of saying, like, don't fucking call me again. Um, but one guy thought it was my dick. <laughs> I know. He was super into it, which was cool. But I was like, first of all, why would my dick be black? Do you know what I mean? It would definitely be that big, but it wouldn't be black. Don't be stupid. That's cool. No, I, have a, I have a boyfriend now, which is new. Um, you guys, you just don't know him because he goes to a different school. We met at camp. <laughs> I, uh, I do have a boyfriend. He's also going through a divorce, uh, which is fun. Uh, and the best thing about it is that I get to talk shit about his ex-wife on stage, which is a great part of the show. But uh, he's here tonight, so that's going to fuck up that whole set of uh, jokes. So we're going to have to do something different. They're good, though. Just trust me. I, uh, I will tell you this. Like, I would never say her name on stage or anything, but I will... I, I will tell you that it rhymes with shmori, 
and starts with an L. So how about that? You know, the only thing, a lot of people sort of say, because, you know, they were together for like 100 years before we were together, so you meet people that he knows, and then they all have to, like, compare you. They have to, you know, all the ways in which you're like Shmori. And a lot of it doesn't seem that important to me, right? It seems like stuff that doesn't matter. We're both blonde, we're both teachers, like, all that seems kind of irrelevant. The only thing that seemed to me is like, okay, like, I have a vagina, and Shmori is a cunt. So <laughs> that together, <laughs> I mean, that's sort of a something I could see. I'm going to leave you guys on the cunt. All right. My name is Abby Washuda. Enjoy the rest of the show.